The Premier League is back and we've just had the first fixture between Arsenal and Crystal Palace. Arsenal eased through as 2-0 victors, I'll say, but it was very much a game of two halves. The first half, Arsenal controlled and the second half, Arsenal lost control of a little bit and allowed Palace to get back in. So let's have a little look at how that shift happened from control to loss of control. So on the board here, we've got the two teams as they lined up. We've got Arsenal looking more like a 4-2-3-1. These days, they were in a 4-3-3 last season, uh, but Palace over on this side, definitely in a 4-3-3. Now, we know what Arsenal are gonna try and do. They're a positional team. They're gonna try and use space, manipulate space, possess the ball uh, and move it into the final third into dangerous scoring positions. So as we always say, positional teams are looking to exploit these spaces between the back line. Obviously there's four players here in the Palace back line and so Arsenal are going to try and get five players into these gaps and really get into dangerous areas. So you'll see the wingers pushing up into these outside spaces. You'll see Odegaard pushing up into this half space here. Gabriel Jesus is the striker, so you'd expect him to be central, although as we've seen so far from Jesus, there is quite a bit of flexibility from him. In this iteration of Arsenal, we're actually seeing Granit Xhaka, who's usually played in a sort of double pivot, is a little bit more uh, of, a, of a careful player. Last season, we would see the left back pushing into these areas, uh, inverting as it were, to try and get into this space. But what we've been seeing with Arsenal this time round is uh, actually Granit Xhaka getting into this space. Zinchenko, a new signing for Arsenal, um, inverting here and just holding position. Um, and Ben White as well, the other fullback, um, inverting and holding this position here, and the two centre backs here. So you've got two, three, five structure. That's what we're seeing. So Arsenal are going to look to try and hold the ball, control the ball and create dangerous chances through possession. Now Crystal Palace are slightly different. They're obviously a counter-attacking team. They've got players like Wilfred Zaha, uh, Jordan Ayew, they've got Hudson Edward as well and then exciting players like Eze too in the in the central space this time around now that they've lost Conor Gallagher uh, and they're going to be more about sitting deep, absorbing pressure, so dropping into these situations out of possession waiting for Arsenal to possess the ball, trying to win it back. And as we can see, the weak parts of Arsenal's structure here, this 2-3 structure, are going to be in these wide areas here. So what we're going to see from Palace is them trying to get the ball to one of their better passers. So Joachim Anderson, a really good passer, and he's going to try and get possession of the ball in a settled manner in such a way that he can just hit these channels here. Uh, and so that's the way that the, the game is going to pan out. It's going to be Arsenal possessing the ball for large stretches, Palace trying to win the ball back and then trying to break at speed, get these players in, Ayu, Zaha, Odson Edouard on the last man and Eze into these spaces here. So it's very much a game of cat and mouse, absorb pressure and the issue of control is going to be fundamental to a team like Arsenal. If they can control the ball in possession, then the opposition aren't going to get the opportunity to then counter-attack. So let's just take a look at what Arsenal do when they lose possession of the ball to stop Palace from getting the ball into those dangerous areas. So we've got the ball here now with Guaita, the Palace goalkeeper, and what Palace are going to try and do is they're going to try and build up from the back. They're trying to move the ball forward, and as we've said, they're going to eventually try and get Anderson into some sort of space like this, where he's got time on the ball to play these long balls into the channel and then they'll try and break down and cause Arsenal's backline problems. So Arsenal employ a really aggressive high press and they try and go man for man in that press and the idea there is if you go man for man on every opposition player you destabilize them you make it hard for them to settle on the ball you make it harder for them to make those passes. So what we'll see is that way to here the palace keeper is going to play the ball one of two ways. If he plays the ball this way what we're going to see is Gabriel Jesus is going to come in here he's going to mark the other center back Martin Odegaard is going to mark the pivot player here, Decore. He's going to stop the ball from coming in here. We're going to see the midfield just go man for man straight up. So Xhaka is going to get on Eze, Partey is going to get on Schlupp. And Martinelli is going to play one of these really interesting hybrid presses that we've seen where he's responsible for two players here. Um, he's going to sit in between the fullback and the centre-back. The ball comes out here, he's going to close the passing lane between them and try and force them here. Now, on the other side, let's imagine that the goal kick goes the other way into here. Gabriel Jesus will go to the far player, Martinelli is on his fullback and now actually rather than what we saw before which was uh, the, the wide player having the, the double responsibility, what we're actually going to see is, and I think this is because Zaha is such a dangerous player that they don't want Saka to get too far away from Ben White, what they do is they drop Saka in here and Odegaard pushes across here, Xhaka comes in here and again you've got this man-for-man -man press and through the first half 
Both of the things that Arsenal were trying to do just worked really well. They were able to possess the ball really well, their structure was lovely. They were able to pass the ball between themselves and not lose it too much. And when they did lose it, they were able to force the ball backwards. Um, Palace just couldn't get those balls in down the lines. And as a result, Palace didn't have a shot on target until the 42nd minute. At that point, Arsenal just looked dominant. They looked like they were not going to have any trouble whatsoever. But then the second half started. So what happened in the second half? Well, two things happened. The first thing was that Arsenal had a few scares just before the half time. Um, they had a shot from Edouard, just a header, right a goal. And then there was another shot later on that was blocked by, I think it was Xhaka in the end. Uh, a couple of scary moments where the goalkeeper looked a little bit unsafe. And I think as a result of that, Arsenal started worrying a little bit about what was going on. They were already 1-0 up at this point. They'd got a header from a corner um, and Martinelli scored. But from that point on, Arsenal seemed to drop a little bit deeper and they started to play in a different way that stopped them from having control. And so what we started seeing was that with Arsenal losing this sense of control, um, when they attacked, they weren't attacking as we would saw in the first half, which is moving the ball into those areas that we saw, attacking the spaces between the centre-backs. Actually, what happened is it was breaking down. Arsenal were becoming much more transitional. They were trying to get the ball forward quicker. And as a result of that, you started ending up with these situations where the rest of the team were sitting deeper, like this. And you might have had Jesus forward or Saka forward and the ball being kicked along in, in here and then not being enough players around to actually structure a, a coherent possession of the ball and so the ball is turning over quickly and as a result of that as well when you're turning the ball over and your players are all in your own half again it's a lot easier for these players now for Crystal Palace to actually possess the ball get the ball to Anderson and now Anderson started hitting these balls into the channels finding Ayu finding Zaha and the the ball coming into these sorts of areas Wolf Zaha in those areas you just don't want to see and so it's very much a game of two halves. In the first half, Arsenal controlled the ball. They're able to keep the ball in possession and they're able to win the ball back out of possession. In the second half, they lost control. They weren't able to possess the ball well enough and they also weren't able to win the ball back when they lost it. And so the question for Arsenal's season is going to be how are they going to deal with those shifts where at one moment they're really in control of the ball, they're able to do exactly what they want and limit the opposition to doing what they want them to do. And on the other hand, then losing control of that and then looking like a very fragile team. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.